A marble with speed 21.8 centimeters a second rolls off the edge of a table 50.1 centimeters high. How long does it take to drop to the floor? And how far horizontally from the table edge does the marble strike the floor? Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, draw a picture, because that's pretty much what I always do with physics questions and most math questions. All right, so we got a marble going this way. I'm going to say it's going 0.21 meters per second. Just convert it over to meters. Uh, meters is more standard and more in, makes more intuitive sense to me. All right, and then the marble is going to fall a distance of, click, 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 clack, 0 0.501 meters. Because that's how high the table is. That's how long it takes to reach the floor. So this is going to be a kinematic equation. And the way I, the second step I do for kinematics problems, after drawing a picture, is I write up my kinematic equations. So you're assuming a constant acceleration, A equals A, V equals AT plus V naught where v is v final, and then the distance is going to be x equals one-half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. Okay, so from this point then, we're going to solve it in the y dimension and then the x dimension. So I'm going to start by solving it in the y dimension. So even though I wrote x's here, they can be y's. It's just a generic dimension. So for a y dimension, acceleration will be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. T, well, that's a question mark. We don't know what that is. Initial speed in the y direction is going to be 0. Even though we have 0.218 uh, meters per second, that's in the x direction. The y direction is soon to be 0. I think it says horizontal. We're going to assume that this is a horizontal table. Um, y naught, which is the initial height, will be 0.501 meters. I'm going to say y final equals zero. I'm just going to say the ground is zero. Okay, so now we're going to plug this into this equation right here. Bum, bum, bum. Green. So, let's see here, get a little more real estate. Write this out. We have y final, which is zero equals one half times negative 9.81 meters per second squared times t squared plus v naught, which is zero times t plus an initial 0 0.501. Okay, this part goes to zero, rearranging things slightly. We have mm, 4.9 t squared equals 0 0.501. I just moved this to the other side and rounded 0.981 to 0.9 or 9.8 because it's simpler. So then t squared equals 0 0.501 over 4.9. t equals, dun dun dun, calculator, on clear, 0 0.501 divided by 4.9, enter. Second square root, second answer. We get 0 0.32, 0 0.32 seconds. So now we know how long it's going to take for it to fall. That's why I think it asked us uh, time first. Next we want to find out how far it goes. So this, we're going to do the same process or similar process, except we're going to do it in the x direction now. So I'm going to do x, but instead of using this equation right here, we're going to use this equation, the second kinematic equation I wrote up. Though, you really probably don't need to consider the first one, A equals constant, or A equals A, an equation. If you're familiar with calculus, that's, the, that's um, kind of how the derivation goes. Okay, so we have V final. Do we have V final? Do we want to do V final? I don't know. No, we're going to use, we're not going to use the second equation. We're going to use the third one again. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do the third one again. So, X final equals question mark. Acceleration is zero because there's no acceleration in the x direction. T is going to be the same as it was in the y direction, so 0.32. Initial velocity, we were given an initial velocity of 0 0.218. 0 0.218, and that's in meters per second. And I'm going to say that the initial distance is zero. So writing up the whole equation, x final, which is the distance we're looking for, is one half times zero. I'm just going to write t here because it doesn't matter because it's going to cancel from the zero. 
plus v naught, which is 0.218, times the time, which is 0.32, plus 0. x initial is 0. There we go. And we're left with 0.218 times 0.32. 0.218. A lot of people just have it memorized that distance equals velocity times time, um, which is works, but I like to have the formula and just go through the whole thing. Let's see here, we have 0 0.07. Doesn't seem very far. So we have 0 0.32 seconds, 0 0.27 yeah, meters, which is about 7 centimeters. Hmm, figured it would be going farther than that. Let's see here, third of a second. Yeah, yeah, that seems reasonable. Um, the other way to remember that formula is through dimensional analysis. So you have distance equals speed divided by time. Rearranging this, you can say that V equals distance times time. Distance is meters. Um, wait a sec, did I do that right? Aha, I did not. Distance equals velocity times time. Get rid of that. Velocity, therefore, equals, scroll this down a little bit, distance divided by time. Distance is in meters, time is in seconds, which makes sense because velocity is meters per second. Okay, I'll write this up real quick. Seven centimeters. Check. Okay, on to part two. Boom, boom, boom. Given x is in meters, velocity is in meters per second, Time is in seconds, and acceleration is in meters per second squared. Pretty reasonable assumptions. Which of these below equations from the following list have units on the left side of the equal sign consistent with units on the right side? So which ones are possible to make sense? Okay, this is called dimensional analysis. Super useful. Um, a lot of times in physics, especially um, mechanics, first couple semesters, um, you can pretty much just rely on this and get maybe a B, maybe a C. You can probably pass the class with minimal conceptual understanding and just knowing how to do uh, dimensional analysis. So this is, this is important. So I'm going to rewrite this part here, which is meters per second. That's an M and that's an S. Cubed equals 2 times, and the 2 doesn't matter because the 2 is without dimensions. A, which is meters per second squared, I know that's an S, that's an S, plus, uh, let's see, this is in meters squared, so look at all the tops, we have meters cubed, seconds cubed, meters cubed over seconds squared, do not equal, so no. This first one, the inconsistent units. Second one. So we have x, which is measured in meters, and we have velocity is meters per second times seconds. S is cancel, left with meters, left with meters. So check. This one is good. Go to these, go to that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Next, we have this one. And I can already tell that this isn't going to work out. So here we have an acceleration and an acceleration. Then we have t singular and t cubed. So these aren't going to match up on the right side even, let alone match up with it on the um, right. So I know this one's not going to work. If we look at the left side, we have meters per second. And then we have meters per second squared. Okay times seconds for time, okay. one of those cancels, and that gives us a velocity. But then we have meters per second squared times second cubed, and we're left with meters times second, which can't be added, can't really be added to this. Um, these two can't be combined, and they definitely don't equal the left side. So that is a big no. Hmm. So t on the left side will be seconds, and then we have 2 times um, m for meters times uh, divided by meters per second squared, and when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, so that's going to be meters second squared 
and this will be square rooted. So the meters cancel and left with square root of s squared. And the way you do the square root is you divide the exponent by 2. So in this case, it will be s to the first, so it will just be s, equals, equals. So yes, this one's good. Check. All right. This one, we already did this one up here. So we have meters per second, and then we have meters per second squared times second, cancel, cancel, meters per second, meters per second. That one's good as well. And this one looks like our kinematic equation we just wrote up on the other side. So I have a feeling, a feels, that this one's gonna work too. So this side we have meters. Over here we have meters per second times second. And we have a one half. And this is gonna be meters per second squared times second squared. Get my canceling color out, red. Cancel, 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 cancel. We have meters, meters, meters. So this one works as well. So that's called dimensional analysis. Super useful, really good to know how to do it in life. It's a good way of checking to make sure, it doesn't mean you have the right answer, but if the dimensions don't work out, it probably means you do have the wrong answer. So, and knowing where is wrong is kind of maybe half the battle, quarter of the battle. I guess it depends on the battle that you're fighting. So I hope that helped. See you next time.